Hello everyone, welcome to History Forge. My name is Taylor Hamlin. Going to be reviewing week 25 of project-based learning in U.S. history. Change in locales today. I have a school counselor in my classroom helping the students out with their high school schedules, so they're all really excited to see their classes. But um, I do get a nice little conference room today, so I'll be reviewing from there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. On Monday, we reviewed the annotated bibliography, so I actually introduced the idea of what an annotated bibliography is. And I actually made some videos to help the students out with it. Um, you know, the challenge with introducing the annotated bibliographies is they're just so big. Um, they're very complex. They have a lot of rules to them. And so, you know, bibliographies are, you know, I wouldn't call them difficult to master. They just take a long time to master. There's a lot, a lot of tiny little rules. They're all very straightforward and easy to understand. It's just a matter of actually being comfortable with doing them and moving on. Um, so a lot of students struggle with, you know, for example, like what is the title of a website or what if the website doesn't have an author or a publishing date? What do we do? Where should the commas and periods go? Or what do we put in quotations? What do we put in italics? Um, so that, it gets really challenging for students to do that. So we work as best we can with it. We do what we can. And, you know, I made a video and some information to help out with that. I'll go ahead and open those up right now so you can see. So you see here, this is the, uh, citing your sources. This has just a bunch of information for the students. I try to give them the actual rules, the most common use citations, along with a example here highlighted in yellow. Looks like a few of my students are actually still on this, probably working on it, so. Yep, so that's that. Um, another thing about annotated bi bibliography is annotations actually have to go along with each uh, citation. So students actually have to write, you know, two to three sentences of to why they are doing or how did the citation help them with their um, project so i tell them you know really just focus on why is the citation important to proving your thesis or how did it help you give you background information in the topic as long as you answer one of those two questions or both then you should be fine so students do that each uh, next one is we did process paper and again process paper is a part of the big project that we're doing students have to write a 500 word paper Basically describing, like right down here, you can see I'm highlighting these questions. I'm trying to highlight. There we go. Um, so they say, like, how did you get the idea for this project or topic? Where did you get your, where did you go for your research? Like, what sources did you use? What information did you gather? Um, how was your understanding of the topic change as you worked and went through? Like, did you went, go from, call, you know, like when you started, you probably had a belief. How did that belief change as you went? So we need to focus on that, too. Um, how does your topic relate to the annual theme of History Day? Going into that a little bit. And so answering all these questions in the process paper. The process papers, I feel like, very simple. Just because we tell them to break it up into four to five paragraphs. So students need to write anywhere between 100 to 125 words. And really it's just about themselves and their project. And especially if you're in a group, it's really easy to do. So since they do that, and then finally they have to make a title page. And the title page examples are on here in the rule book in page... Oh shoot, I didn't say. So here, we'll go ahead and search for it real quick. Should be able to find it, yeah. So if I, I just control F and clicked on title page and I found rule 14 here on page 17 it looks like. So right here you can kind of see the different title page examples. You have the title on top, you have a couple spaces, then you have the name. Here where we'd put junior division. Anybody in middle school would be junior division. And then you have your actual category. So you'd put historical paper, you could put group exhibit, or if you were in an individual exhibit, you would write individual exhibit. You can kind of see that right here, where it says individual performance. And then you actually write how many words each thing is. So for an essay, you just have to write the essay because the essay does not need a process paper, just needs the essay. So right here, they said 2,234 words. Right down here, they say how long the process paper is and how long like the actual, like how many words are into the actual exhibit. So again, kind of see how this all can work for title pages. But yeah, that's what we really introduced on Monday. So really the students had time to work on the annotated bib. I had them watch a video and they had to show me that they could do one citation by themselves. And you know, that's one citation out of many. So I'm sure the students are gonna have anywhere on average of one to 12 to do. And just collecting all that stuff and writing it down is gonna be a big part of these you know final weeks that we have. Um, moving down to Tuesday. You know, peer review for big project. I actually skipped this. Um, you know, I didn't feel like peer reviewing at that point was a good idea. Um, especially since 
a lot of the students had a lot, you know, I wanted to give them more time for their annotated bibliographies. I didn't realize how long they were going to take, and I should have because they're very difficult to do. And so really, you know, I taught the students how to do an annotated bib, and I felt like it was necessary to give them time in class to work on that annotated bibliography. So they did work on the annotated bib. We did focus a lot on it. But overall, I think it worked really well. Um, we have project writing. So after their annotated bibs are done, I gave them time to work on their actual project. And we actually had high school students on Tuesday coming in to review projects. So instead of having you know peers review, so other eighth grade students, we just brought in high school students who competed last year. Um, these are the students who made it to state or went to nationals, and so they really knew what they were doing. And I felt like they gave them a really good edit. So we had them come down, so the students were able to answer that peer review. On Wednesday, you know, just with the big project, sometimes we have to put a lot of time into it. So we did, we got rid of peer review again, we didn't do that. Um, I did have students go through basically all their project writing that they received the day before. And so last week, week 25, really turned into work on annotations, work on process paper, take the information you're getting, the reviews and critiques you're getting from other classes, and bring that into your own. Um, so really we focused on how to create an annotated bib and how to take criticism. We also had a video lecture, so we did do that. And the video lecture was over the War of 1812, so I can write that down in here. So we are, you know, we finished up with migration and immigration in our, you know, kind of daily work history stuff. I wanted to talk a little bit about the War of 1812, so they watched a, you know, like 20 minute video describing what the War of 1812 was, why it was important, just very, you know, general background. And then, you know, just because for the sake of time, we won't be able to spend too much time on it, but we will talk about the significance of the War of 1812 and, you know, it, like uh, the United States moving on past that point. And then on Thursday, Thursday was our last day, because last week we had Friday off. Um, the students had to show me a two to three week plan on how they were going to improve their projects. And, you know, once again, we did a lot of annotated bibliography work, but we did at least get to that plan and talk about it. I wrote on the whiteboard all of the different things I had to do, all of the emails. Um, oops, did not make sure that. Um, but I did want the students to have as much time as possible last week to work on that material. So that's really what we focused on. And this, you know, coming week, really, we only have three weeks left. So we will be spending more time on the project. Kind of the daily historical work will take a back seat just for the sake of time. And it's really important to remember too, a lot of the students have been spending a lot of time on these projects. And so what's a good idea in my opinion is to actually take these projects and let the kids teach each other. So, you know, the following weeks from now, students are going to read several of their peers' projects and learn a little bit of history from each other. Um, they're going to get very in-depth knowledge and hopefully really decent theses and evidence to back up these big main arguments over several different topics in history. You know, I have students who are going all the way back from, like they, they started with discovery and they're working their ways up until, you know, reconstruction. So I think we'll see a lot of good projects and that will be able to teach students. So that's pretty much it for the week. Um, we had a short week. We actually have a short week this coming week too. And that's going to be all I focus on. If you have any questions or want to check out any of these links out, feel free to check out the video description. And if you, again, if you have any questions, feel free to message me either on YouTube or any of my social media. Guys, take care and have a good day. And there it is. All right, bye.